Hi friends, we're going to take a look at um, the FRQ grading um, from the 2004 AP Stats exam. This is problem number three. It's the famous dinosaur bone problem. Um, in this particular problem, um, they tell you a little bit about an archaeological site and they tell you about you know some background information and um, you also can sort of see that they are selecting femurs they're going to be randomly selected without replacement and we know that there are 20 femurs within that particular swamp and a says let x be the number out of four selected left femurs that are from males based on how these bones were sampled explain why the probability distribution of x is not binomial so they're telling you that it's not binomial so for something about um, you have to figure out well what makes it not binomial Binomial and geometric probability problems are based on Bernoulli trials. And so it's something about that. That hole without, replace, without replacement is going to help you out there. It's not binomial because the probability of picking a male dinosaur bone does not remain constant. After you picked one, the next pick, the probability changes. So your answer here is um, going to have two parts right here. You have to identify that the probability, um, the picks are not independent of each other, okay? And that because there is no replacement, the probability changes. So there's two things that we're looking for. So this person right here, it says, since there, if there is no replacement, the probability changes, check. But I also wanna see that the picks are also not independent of each other, okay? Which is sort of what all this really means. Okay, so I'm going to give this point um, right here. Oh, and I'm also looking for context in the problem. Um, since it talks about femurs, right, we're good. We have some context going on. So there are three checks right here. My person got two out of three. Independence, it's not. Probability changes because we're doing this without replacement. And then we need context. Now for part B, it says they did pick them and we're supposed to figure out what the probability that all four of those femurs are going to be male, all right? So the first thing that I'm looking for is P of X equals four. Now I see something going on right here, probability of all four being male. I'm gonna go ahead and give them credit for that, but I would prefer to see probability written like this, um, okay? Um, because they talked about X being um, sort of like the variable that we're using in the problem. I would like to reuse it that way, okay? So the first number right here is one half. Remember on the first pick, there are 10 males out of 20, which reduces to one half. The next pick, since you're not replacing, nine out of 19, okay? And then it's gonna be eight out of 18, which reduces to four over nine. And the last one is seven out of 17. You do not have to reduce these fractions. So if you have that work right there, you are going to get the work point. But you have to show 10 out of 20, 9 out of 19, 8 out of 18, 7 out of 17. You gotta show work for that. You can reduce them if you want, okay? And then the final answer is 0 0.043. Check. So this one is also worth three points. My person got all three points for this particular problem, okay? Now, part C, all right, I'm gonna move it down. It says the DNA test and reveal that, oh my gosh, that all four of them were actually male. And so based on the results and our answer from, from part B, do you think they were equally represented? Okay, I want you to go back and let's take a look at our answer for B. The probability right here is 0 0.0433 to get all four of them to be male. The thing is, they got that to happen. The probability is so low that it shouldn't have happened, but it did. So that means it's probably sort of unlikely, all right, that um, that this had happened or that, some, there's, that, that males and females were equally represented. That point oh, um, 0.0433 um, sort of gives us some doubt as to what that equal representation is. It's making us think that it's not. So that means to get, to point, to get the points in this particular problem, there needs to be a negative answer that it's not likely, it's unlikely, or no, it's not very likely. There needs to be a negative. My person says it does not seem likely. So there needs to be a negative um, aspect to the answer. And then we need to make sure we justify why. Well, the reason why it wasn't likely is because the probability is just so low, all right? And so um, they go through, it's because the likelihood of is, is, is only 4.3%. 
Okay, now I'm going to sort of like, I'm going to go, stating what the probability is, is not saying why that probability is telling you that it's unlikely. Now that only sort of salvages it a little bit. It sort of makes you think that the person meant to say, oh, because it's so small at being 4.3% or 0.043. I am not going to give them credit here because if it says, if it said it were true, if it was so low at only 4.3%, there needs to be an, uh, the essence has to be that they have to say that it's so low. The last check is going to be, do they have context in here? Do they talk about swamp, brontosaurus, femur, something like that? And in this case, they talk about males and females, and they have swamp. I do see, uh, I do see um, uh, context go going on right here. So my person got two out of the three points. The last part right here, is it reasonable um, to generalize, generalize our conclusion from in part C, pertaining to the group of 20 brontosauruses, to the entire population of all brontosaurus? Explain why or why not. In this case, there needs to be a negative answer, no. You cannot generalize um, based on this particular group of dinosaur bones. This was one swamp, one swamp out of perhaps many swamps that dinosaur bones um, could be found or where dinosaurs actually were living back in the age of dinosaurs. So the answer though um, can be twofold, all right? The first, first way that the AP gave credit is, is if they said that because they are not randomly selecting the bones from across the, um, all the different swaps going on um, by using some kind of random sampling technique, that gave them credit for justification. And so I'm looking here, due to the fact that the bones were collected, it's possible. Uh, okay, so they didn't go with that, all right? So I'm looking for an idea that it was not random. They would have gotten a point for that. The other way you can get credit for your justification is by getting across that this swamp might not be representative. That this swamp is maybe somehow an unusual swamp. Maybe the food sources or the ecosystem or the predator-prey ratios um, somehow made male-female dinosaurs be, be not represented, okay? Um, showing that is another way of justifying that is not representative. Um, they were talking about this swamp, that the males were gathering food or testing a path for females. That's getting across that there's something about this swamp that might be different about it, which causes it to be not representative of all dinosaur bones. So a check mark for that. All right, or you can use the not random. That would be the other way to just justify this, okay? So this one is only worth two points. My person got two out of two. Two plus three is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus three is 11. So this, this is worth 11 points. My person missed two out of them, so they got nine out of 11. So you figure out what your score is, and thanks for listening.